Hi everyone, let's get started with the SOLIDWORKS. Uh, in the module one, we will take a look at how to set up a part, how to set up the units, and how to save a simple part on your desktop. All right, so when you start the SOLIDWORKS, you will need to start with File, New, and you will see the dialog box open that says you need to select a part, an assembly, or a drawing. So let's say we want to create the part. This is under the Novice option. If you select the Advanced option, then you will also see the similar options here, Part, Assembly, and Drawing. These are basically the three documents of the SOLIDWORKS that you can create. Most of the times when you become the expert user, you want to set up your part file template uh, at the beginning itself by selecting, let's say, a particular uh, unit system, or a particular drafting standard, then you can create a template of that part file and then store it here. So once you come to here to click a new part, you can just go to the advanced and then click that particular template and start your work on that particular template. Okay, But for this purpose, we can just start off with a novice uh, part, click OK. If you're starting the SOLIDWORKS for the first time, you may see a a uh, window here that will ask you to select your unit system choice uh, and that you can select it but we can always change that unit system once we start building the part file it is extremely important that you select the unit system before even you start creating a new part because once you start selecting a part it is difficult to change the unit system and it creates a lot of problems in terms of uh, changing the uh, units from one system to another system. So let's first take a look at what are the different uh, items are here on the SOLIDWORKS uh, screen. Obviously this big area in the middle is the graphics area where we can create the parts supported by a triad that shows these three standard orthogonal X, Y and Z directions. Also by default, it shows that you're gonna get a trimetric uh, three-dimensional view. And if you remember, we can, uh, you know, we have talked about it, uh, the three standard uh, three-dimensional views, one being the trimetric, the other one is dimetric, and the third one is the isometric view that you can get it in the SOLIDWORKS, okay? You can see the unit system at the right side bottom corner. Uh, if I click on that, unit system which by default it says MMGS uh, for my version of SOLIDWORKS it could be inches or some other units for your uh, version of SOLIDWORKS you can change it here meters or centimeters or millimeters or inches okay uh, if you click on this arrow here uh, or even if on this uh, MMGS or the unit system here if you click on the edit document units it will take you to the uh, option where you can set up the unit system for the part. You can uh, also change the number of decimal places. If you click on one of the windows here and click on the drop down arrow, you can set up the number of units or set, uh, set up the number of decimal places uh, for your basic units. Okay, that is how we can set up the units. Now, on the left hand side this particular area is called as a feature manager design tree and you can notice that uh, it's sort of a design tree starting off with the naming of the uh, part file then what kind of material that we are using and then the three standard orthographic planes uh, front plane top plane and the right plane for the part and also it shows the origin so with respect to this uh, origin uh, the front plane top plane and the right plane are defined okay so that is the feature manager design tree on the uh, top of this feature manager design tree there are several options here uh, the property manager or the configuration manager uh, there is a dimensional expert manager appearances and display manager uh, for my version I have installed the cam as well so depending on what uh, modules that you have installed in your SOLIDWORKS, uh, you can see those appearing here. The first one is obviously the feature manager design tree. 
Just on the top of that are all these different tabs that you can add on depending on your subscription. Um, the features sketch evaluate are by default present on your version of the SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you can also click on these add-ins and you can add on uh, some of the other tools uh, in your SOLIDWORKS. I have simulation, MBD, uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM, the CAM TBM. Um, depending on you know what do you really need from your SOLIDWORKS, you can add on and install it here. Okay. The most importantly, we are going to be using the Features tab, the Sketch tab, and the Evaluate tab uh, for the purpose of this basic course. On the top of these tabs is the uh, Command Manager area. So depending on what tab that you choose, those commands are uh, displayed and whatever those commands are feasible, they will be highlighted other than uh, those other features which are not possible to be created will be grayed out. Okay, depending on your geometry of the part, those features will be either uh, enabled or they will be grayed out. Then we have the drop down menu. Um, as you can see here, most of the times when we start the SolidWorks, uh, you can click on this uh, arrow and then you can see the pin on the right side. I recommend you to pin this always so that the drop down options are always available to you. So under the file you have standard, new, open, uh, open the recent files, save, save as, make drawing from part or make assembly from part also are the quick shortcuts to go from here. And you know as we go further along we will be able to see some of the uh, features that are present here uh, that we can uh, use it. Okay, on the right hand side corner you have the task pane. Uh, so under in the task pane you have the resources for SOLIDWORKS, you have the design library where you can see the uh, toolbox and you need to install the toolbox. If we can add that toolbox in there and select the unit system. We will be using ANSI metric and ANSI inch uh, as our uh, unit system. So if I double click on ANSI inch, oh, I'm sorry, you know, either way, ANSI inch or ANSI metric, you can see that we have uh, options for choosing bearings, bolts and screws, nuts, O-rings, power transmission. Under that, we have gears, washers. So all these kinds of uh, items are available that we can directly incorporate uh, in our uh, design. Then there is a view palette where we, uh, when, we when we create the drawing, uh, we have the uh, standard views available in the view palette. Then we have the appearances and you know other items are present there on the uh, task pane. Okay. On the graphics area, we can see the uh, heads up tools bar. Okay, this is also very important and pretty useful uh, when we create uh, the drawing. At the bottom is the status bar. Okay, so we can see what is happening in the part by looking at the status uh, at the status bar. Uh, talking about the heads up toolbar, the first option is zoom to fit. If we create a part or a drawing and if it disappears from the screen, you can always uh, click here to bring it back uh, onto your screen. Then you have zoom to area or the previous view. Uh, we can do the sectional view and there are so many other options here. The hide and the show items also if you can uh, you know, notice here some of the things you can uh, make it uh, display or hide them if you don't really need them uh, to be displayed on your graphics area. And then you have the appearances and all other things. So once you get uh, familiar with the uh, SOLIDWORKS screen uh, it becomes easier to locate what items that you want to look for. It comes with the practice. If you uh, want to search a particular command, you can always uh, type the command here and it will show you where that command is present. For example, if I want to search for a uh, how to create a circle, so it's going to show you the circle uh, sketch that we want to create and let's say I don't know where it is, uh, you can click on this uh, show command location and then it will point it out to you with a big you know red arrow that you just saw uh, as where that command is located all right uh, for example if i want to say uh, move uh, 
or you know if I go to the features tab and if I want to search for move uh, slash copy command or move slash copy bodies um, it should uh, it should show in that uh, region there it's probably not showing here because we have nothing here on the graphics area uh, or you know, something that might have gone wrong at this point uh, but anyways you can always search some uh, commands here uh, that you can locate so that's the uh, basic uh, idea about setting up uh, the new SOLIDWORKS part, the units. Uh, let's see how we can save that. So once we start a new part, uh, we can save as, and there are several options uh, that you can uh, choose from uh, as the type. So the standard SOLIDWORKS part is saved as SLDPRT. Uh, and if you expand that, uh, we have uh, many other options that you can uh, save it, uh, for example, Parasolid or Parasolid binary or uh, library feature part or a state file or IGES file or, uh, you know, all these other extensions are, uh, you know, used to sometimes you can transfer it to the other software for the purpose of 3D printing or uh, that particular software can uh, open up the part file that is created in the SOLIDWORKS. Okay. Um, once we start creating a new part, first thing that you want to look for is what kind of uh, the sketching plane that you need to choose. You can have uh, the option of choosing the front plane or the top plane or the right plane at the beginning. But really depending on the geometry of the part file, you need to make a decision as what would be the most appropriate plane that needs to be selected. For example, if I um, open up uh, a sample part and let's say we want to build this part, uh, it would make sense again based on what geometry uh, you know, or what the dimensions are provided. Um, if let's say the um, length and the uh, breadth dimensions are provided uh, for creating the part, then it would make sense to select the top plane as we are looking at it from the top, right? But if the dimensions are provided, for example, this height here and uh, the length here, then it would make sense to select the front plane because whenever the object is placed in a three-dimensional sense, you should always look at that object as uh, you know from the from the direction as we see here uh, is the x uh, I mean you know uh, the front uh, view in the x y plane. The direction from this side is the right plane direction, which is the y z plane. And when we look at it from the top, it is the x z plane that is the top plane. Okay. So depending on how the dimensions are provided, we're going to select that particular. Uh, plane for creating the part file okay uh, so in this case you know like I said if we have given the dimensions of length uh, and the height here uh, we're going to choose the front plane okay um, let me open the other part I mean there are several examples uh, you know that can be talked about or as you will realize once you start creating the different part files so if you want to create this cylinder and if there is a threaded hole here inside uh, the cylinder uh, it makes sense to start this drawing from the top view uh, because most likely the diameter would be given and the height would be given so it makes sense to uh, you know create this circle in the top plane and then you know extrude it in the uh, linear direction to create a solid model okay and so when we create this in the uh, when we show this in the three-dimensional uh, view uh, then we can make a decision as you know this is the front view this is the right view and that's the top view so it makes sense to create uh, this part file in the uh, top plane uh, the other uh, quick uh, directions or uh, you know the tricks here are that uh, you can use the control key so if, if you hold down the control and one then you see the front view of the object and that you can also notice here at the bottom corner here Control plus 2 will show the back view. Control plus 3 will show the left view. Control plus 4 right view. 
control plus five uh, is the top view control plus six is the bottom control plus seven is the isometric view and control uh, so you know using all these controls uh, you can uh, orient the part file very quickly also you can make use of the s key so if you click on the s uh, letter you can see the shortcut uh, options here appear that you can uh, you know simply choose from so sometimes if you want to work this part faster uh, you can even customize this s key and you know add on uh, whatever uh, you want uh, to that shortcut menu so that you can quickly select it rather than going up to the command manager and selecting that option. You can also use your mouse very effectively. So I highly recommend to use mouse uh, with the middle button or the, uh, you know, the roller uh, in the middle uh, that you can scroll uh, to effectively use the SOLIDWORKS. So if you just Click and hold the uh, middle mouse button or the roller and uh, you know go up and down or sideways you can rotate the uh, object uh, by holding the control key down and uh, pressing down the middle mouse button or the or the roller you can pan it uh, in the, in this plane and if you simply scroll up and down the roller then you can zoom in and zoom out uh, this particular solid model if you click and hold the roller and um, or sorry if you click and hold the right uh, um, you know right mouse button and just slide it to the right uh, you can again orient the part in different ways and so there are a lot of shortcuts that you can also learn along the way to use the SOLIDWORKS. Okay, that's the end of uh, this video to get started with SOLIDWORKS. And uh, in the next video, we will look at how to create the drawing file.